The Red Turtle is not a film for everyone. Welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm reviewing a film that's not anime. It is a French animated film, but it was made with the assistance of Studio Ghibli, particularly Isao Takahata, who directed hmm, um, Grave of the Fireflies and Only Yesterday and other very interesting uh, anime films at Studio Ghibli. So, I'm making an exception to review this film. The Red Turtle is an art house film. And by that I mean it is not your typical action explosions, um, you know, first act, second act, third act, typical film. Uh, now, it does actually have a pretty reasonable three act structure, but it doesn't feel like a hero's journey in the way that a lot of traditional films do. The Red Turtle is about a man who washes up on a desert island and you follow him over the course of uh, some time on that island. I'm not going to reveal anything else about what this movie is about. Um, suffice to say there is a Red Turtle involved and you just follow him and what happens on the island. There is no dialogue per se. Uh, the character does vocalize, but it's grunts, it's yells of outrage, things along those lines. But there, there are basically, you know, there are no words, per se. Which is one of the nice things about the film, is that it doesn't, you know, you can watch it from anywhere, and there, there's no need to subtitle it or anything. The reason I think this is not for everyone is that it's a very quiet film. Um, there are scenes of drama and scenes of suspense but it's fundamentally a kind of a slice of life film it is about this guy and his life and what he's trying to do what he's trying to accomplish on this island and how he lives his life as such it's kind of a slow film it is a film that you sit back and watch and that is where I think the enjoyment of this film comes in. It is much like going to an aquarium, where there's not going to be a lot of exciting action, but you're not there for action. You're there to observe, to soak it in. This is a beautiful film. This is a film full of art, of people getting across mood and tone and surprisingly subtle emotion with drawings. There's a fair amount of CGI work in the film, but in there's no there are no CGI models on screen that I'm aware of. Instead, what you see are um, drawings with a uh, CGI model behind them to you know move, for example, large great numbers of blades of grass in waving patterns, things along those lines. Um, so it's not a CGI model with you know textures on on them. But there is some CGI work w with that to allow them to animate these large-scale elements of nature that would otherwise be just prohibitively expensive to draw. That might be a little off-putting to some people who are kind of die-hard purists about drawn animation. To my mind, it works. There are a few moments when it's a, it feels a little artificial, um, but in general, it, it definitely works to create this sense of this this piece of nature where this guy just has to live. It is just ridiculous. Um, where uh, The amount of care they put into how this island works and understanding little cues about what's going on in the island. Um, the story continues as we follow uh, uh, the character and it's one of the things I like about the, about, about the, the movie without getting into spoilers is how well they show the character's change in personality and approach to things. His moods are very clear. And again, this is a movie without dialogue. Most films rely on dialogue to get across emotion, to get across what people are thinking and feeling. Without that, you are relying on the drawings. This is a very, very difficult thing for any animated work. To just show you a drawing and have you understand exactly from the drawing what a character is thinking or wanting 
or feeling. And I never felt like that was unclear in the film. A very impressive job. Um, I should point out that as an art house film, this does not have a traditional Hollywood ending. Um, again, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that the ending is... Um, I felt very satisfied by, but wasn't a hero's journey ending in a traditional sense. It comes to a an effective ending. You ever have one of these movies where you come to the ending and you think, huh, like that that does tie up all the loose ends, but I'm just not sure what I think about it. And so you go away and you think about it. And it keeps coming back to your mind and you keep thinking about it and coming up with things. And after a while you realize, you know, whether that ending was exactly what I would have done, it's kept me thinking. It's kept me evaluating the story and the character's choices. That's a pretty impressive thing for any piece of art. So, if you're looking for something a little different, a little more quiet, um, a little more focused on the beauty of the art and the effectiveness of the art, the Red Turtle is definitely a, a worthwhile attempt uh, for your time. I will also point out one thing. Um, the movie's, a, I want to say, a little slower at the beginning, and then does start to coalesce about a third of the way, coalesce, about a third of the way into the story. So if you feel it's a little too slow for you, I'd give it a little while longer. And you know, push through a little bit. You know, if you hate it, turn it off, that's fine. But you know, it does start to tell a bit more of a story later on in the story. So just FYI. That's the Red Turtle. I hope you find this helpful. I hope you find it interesting. And if you're into this kind of movie, I hope that this is something that uh, you enjoy, because I sure did.